Okay, so let's talk about some analytical solutions to the semiconductor equations. The equations are listed here on the right. Let's dive into them. Again, band diagrams come out of the Poisson equation. And uh, we'll talk about drift diffusion approximations for minority carrier transport, and we'll talk about ambipolar transport as well. All right, so when we uh, pursue an analytical solution, we have to divide our system. We have to um, divide typically our uh, system into regions in which we consider some homogeneous type behavior. So here imagine you have a slab of uh, some material uh, where we divide it into a one-dimensional system. That would be a, a, a typical uh, approach to solving these problems, typically in one dimension. So we'll turn this sideways and uh, devise these three regions uh, that will carry uh, some analytical solutions through. Okay, so in con uh, concretely, we'll consider a case that we carry through in this lecture where we consider uh, a, these device consisting of three layers. Uh, there's a metal contact on the left and the right. And let's assume this thing is acceptor doped, so P doped. And um, we turn on light. Here in the middle of this device, yellow, we have a bunch of light shining in like this, okay? Uh, let's assume that for argument's sake that the right region here is full of traps, okay? So full of mid-gap traps. Uh, maybe we have an un, unpassivated uh, passiva uh, surface on, on uh, around the device like this. Interface traps at the end on the right region uh, we'll uh, consider as well. Let's assume that the left region here in red is trap free, and um, and that the light left and right re uh, regions are contacted by some metal electrode. Okay. All right, so um, how did we solve something similar uh, for Schrodinger's equation? So we divided the system into components. We had a number of unknowns for a number of regions, and we had boundary conditions at the edges, and we had internal boundary conditions that provided a continuity uh, on the interfaces that the wave function had to be continuous, the first derivative had to be continuous, and um, we had some uh, determin uh, determinant that we could uh, get the coefficients uh, out of the set of equations, and we might normalize for the wave function to get the final unknown coefficient. So that's a strategy we pursued a couple of times, and here we do something similar uh, where we utilize an ansatz of solutions similar to this particle in the box we had solved, and apply boundary conditions and carry forward our calculation. So let's pursue this. So we'll have multiple regions that we consider independently and carry through some differential equations and uh, solve the differential equations. And then we bring them together by applying boundary conditions. All right. So let's consider the central region first. Um, we have a, a uniform uh, illumination that we assumed. Uh, let's assume a uniform doping and that it's a, 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 we are looking at a, a transient effect where we shine light, okay? So, we start out with the continuity equation for the electrons, which in this case are the minority carriers. Um, and we have the drift and diffusion ex expression here as well. Okay, so we are assuming that the illumination is uniform and we assume that there is no spatial gradient on the current density. All right, if that's the case, um, we can write down the differential of the electron density as a function of time. Uh, we know that the uh, N0 here is small compared to in the excitation, and we're typically neglecting it, and we wrote down N is N0 equilibrium and, and some the excita excited end. All right. And so we, we can, uh, okay. Now for holes, we can uh, do the same thing. We assume that there is no spatial gradient. And uh, 
we have the Poisson equation on the bottom that is satisfied where uh, both electrons and holes balance each other. Okay, so now let's uh, take this expression for the uh, electron density as a function of time, and this is the minority carrier uh, density that is re uh, relaxing with a minority carrier lifetime. And we can solve this differential equation, of course, with a simple exponential. So you must be very familiar with this uh, 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 this differential equation. Um, the general solution is written down with coefficients a and b. And now we will use boundary conditions to determine um, the, these coefficients a and b. So at time equals zero, when uh, the light has not been turned on yet, uh, we know that the excess, uh, excess minority carriers must be zero. So a must be minus b. And at time of infinity, uh, the system uh, must have come to steady state, and therefore uh, it must be uh, uh, the, uh, the excess number of carriers must be the generation times the relaxation, because those two are balancing out. So that gives us the coefficient a, which we can then plug back in to have an expression, and uh, we will see a time-dependent uh, behavior of this excess uh, minority carrier concentration. It rises with a rise time of tau and it reaches a maximum level here as g tau. Okay, this is pretty simple, right? This, there's no, no, nothing really fancy here. Now we look at the uh, left side of our hypothetical device. Uh, it's a one-sided minority diffusion that we considered here at steady state. So uh, we assume that there is uh, uh, no change in time. And we also assume uh, that there is no traps, as we had laid out, and there is no generation. So r is 0, n is 0, and the differential of time is 0. OK, if that's the case, we can strike out a bunch of terms. And we are basically uh, finding an expression for djn uh, uh, dx. Okay. Now, we are assuming that there is no electric field in the system, and therefore, on the diffusion uh, equation, we can also lose this term. All right, now we have uh, uh, a term left over for the electron current, and that diffusion current is not zero, because we have a boundary condition here, which connects the system to excess minority carriers that we will treat. Okay, so that will give us a boundary condition, and these two expressions combined say that the second differential d2n dx squared must be zero. We're just combining these two expressions. Now we have a differential equation for this region one. We will solve it in general and then apply a boundary condition. Of course, if you have a second differential like this uh, that is uh, uh, to zero, the standard solution of this uh, expression is just a, a linear function. This linear function has a slope and a maximum amplitude, and we call that with coefficients c and d. And now we're going to apply some boundary conditions. Uh, we've chosen a coordinate system here that goes to the left to make our life easy. This is the value a at the edge, and we call this coordinate system x prime. So. A metal contact means, in general, that the minority carrier concentration of, uh, at the metal contact is going down to zero because the metal provides so much density of states and so much high electron density that it'll just take on uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the semiconductor excess carriers. It'll, so basically, the, the, the normal assumption is that a metal contact at a semiconductor interface sets the minority carrier concentration back to zero. So that's the boundary condition here on the left, which means that C must be minus dA. Okay. So we have a, a, a current that is effectively flowing out at the, this interface with a, um, um, uh, with a velocity of the um, um, metal and an electron density of the metal. Okay, 
So uh, we, we have the boundary condition uh, that we now have set here, and we we'll set that value to C, and we'll have to determine C through boundary conditions in the middle region of 1. Okay. So let's say we have this boundary condition and we have this level C somehow. What does the uh, electron density look like? Well, as plotted as a function of x prime, the electron density decreases linearly in, in space from some injection level at position 0 to the metal contact at length A. Nothing fancy here. Now let's treat the third um, segment of this device. Uh, we are assuming that this device segment is trap filled either from unpacified surfaces or due to some um, material that is not quite clean, mid-level traps. Um, and we're looking at steady state and we're uh, assuming again acceptor doped uh, device region and we're looking at minority carrier concentra uh, concentration and diffusion. All right. Steady state means the number of uh, electrons in the system doesn't change over time. Uh, there is uh, 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 the recombination is not zero in this case because we have a lot of trap, but uh, but we are setting explicitly as a as a, a model system that we have no generation. Maybe this this part here is shielded from the light where we uh, where we shine light in segment two. All right. Again, the electric field inside the device is zero, but the, there is a diffusion component due to injection at this interface. So let's figure out what the electron density as a function of space would look so like in this region number three. All right. Again, we have the uh, expression for the uh, the uh, electron density here. We can solve this differential expression very simply um, and solve the second order differential expression, which is, of course, an exponential function that is increasing or decreasing. This is similar to how we solved Schrodinger's equation. Um, and we have solutions that are both exponentially decreasing and increasing, similar to what we've done with uh, tunneling and the Schrodinger equation. All right, again, we have now boundary conditions. We are assuming a metal contact in the system. So at some length b, where the coordinate system runs now from zero to x here, uh, we set the, the minority carrier concentration to zero. And that gives us a relationship between the coefficient f and e. And at x equals 0, we need to balance the number of carriers um, against the injection that is coming from this side here. So this is our boundary condition here. All right, so we have analytical expressions for the carrier concentration uh, on the left and the right, and we have injection. Um, this is the solution on the right-hand side with these exponentials in it. And the, the solution components look like this. You had uh, excitations of carriers here where you generate carriers. And at steady state, we have generating carriers throughout the device. So we're not assuming time evolution anymore, but we have a constant generation of carriers that is um, uh, happening in, inside the device due to light. And this mi uh, minority carrier access is being imposed here at the edges of these device domains. And we have a linear relationship here on the left. And it's linear because we don't lose any other particles through uh, a recombination. And here we have an exponential decay, um, and it's no longer linear, but it's exponential since there is a relaxation in the system. Both of these systems have a zero boundary condition at, at the end where the metal contact is absorbing any minority carriers in the system. Now we have these boundary conditions. We can put them uh, into the three uh, coordinate systems and, and, and solve for it. 
there's really no black magic anymore. You have an expression uh, for the carrier distribution in, in here and in here. And when you have that, you can now calculate dn dx and you can calculate a current in the system. So this is not very hard to do. Uh, what, what is harder to do is understand some of the assumptions that we build in. Why is at this edge here and the metal edges, why are the minority carrier concentrations zero? That's an uh, important uh, statement you need to walk away from from this exercise. Uh, what you also should walk away from is that if you don't have any other uh, processes to uh, have the uh, carrier concentration decrease other than diffusion out, the relationship is going to be linear. If you have other processes where you can have a carrier recombination that uh, happens throughout the device, then you will have an exponential decay given constant injection from one point. So those are things to walk away from this analytical solution. And that's where these analytical solutions really have a lot of power where you can gain some insight as to what should be happening in these device, uh, devices like this, and we'll have a couple of exercises assigned in the course for this. All right, so here's the analytical solution summary. Um, you start from the continuity equations with the basis of the analysis, uh, and that's what we're gonna use in this course. Um, the numerical solution of these uh, uh, equations is quite possible and there's lots of commercial uh, software available to do so now. But I think you need to understand what comes out of these numerical calculations. Do they make sense? You can't just uh, blindly run these tools and they have to make sense in the corner cases of, of, of simpler geometries, simpler devices, such that you can begin to trust these uh, tools and really become a user of these with uh, getting really insight out of the numerics as well. So you have to understand the physical uh, processes under the hood and these num analytical exercises really help with that. So that being said, we're gonna go into the next segment, which is 18.3, where we're gonna start looking at uh, numerical solutions of these problems. So with that, I thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next section.